When should I start planning for my child's education? How am I going to fund it? It's what we're talking about today in the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, joined by a resident expert, financial planner, Helen Baker. Hello. Hello. Now, are we going to, is this any of this advice today? Disclaimer, disclaimer. No. Okay. We're going to just talk generally. Please see the disclaimer at the end. Okay. Fabulous. Now, when should you start saving for your child's education? I, I hear some really frightening stories. I'd say three generations ago. <laughs> oh, really? It's becoming really bad, isn't it, in terms of cost. So I was just at something and they uh, were saying that the cost of somebody born today mm -hmm. for their senior education, so not even including primary school in somewhere like Sydney or Melbourne, mm -hmm. is how much it would cost. Uh, well, so they're getting born today. Oh, I'm going to have a shot at around about 100k a year or something, maybe. Apparently, outrageous. 577 thousand dollars is going to have to cost, which is a house. So, so they're born today, and that's what we're talking about 12, 13 years time. Whew. It's a massive amount of money, right? Even in future dollars. Yeah. Okay. So, what do people do about this, though? It's a funny future education. Look, it is important because mm. we all want the best for our children. You know, yeah. When that when that time comes to educate them, type thing is, what do people do about it? Yeah. So, I think obviously starting early with any form of investment is the best part because mm. the longer that you have to invest that money, mm. the less risk you need to take to get it to where it needs to be. But it gets the benefit of that time compounding on, uh, compounding and compounding on it. The other thing is to look at the structure that it's in. So we often talk about, you know, stretching people's money. So if this is what it is and then you're losing this much in tax or fees or whatever it is, then you end up with that. Mm. So if we can push some of these bits back, it means more for you. So. I think what we're seeing is uh, grandparents beginning to fund their grandchildren's education because the okay. parents are locked down in terms of just servicing mortgages and so on. Mm. But the question becomes with us living longer, is there going to be enough for, like if it was our generation as the grandparent, are we actually going to be able to do that without putting our own financial position in jeopardy? Mm. Okay. So, so what yeah. we're talking about, this refinance the house, sell the car, forget about the holidays for a dozen years. Yeah. And my kids have got to go to school. Yeah, which is probably not likely. So it becomes that balancing mm -hmm. act about what's important to us and what compromises do we need to be making um, and planning, planning, always planning. Yeah. yeah, okay. Because there's no specific things in taxation around, like, you know, where there's no, there's no superannuation for children's education, is there? No, but there are some other special ways that you can invest money which are really nice tax effective. Okay. Um, if you hold them for a certain, like around the 10 year mark, you can bring the money out tax free and oh, okay. so on so on. So it's that kind of bit of stretching that money again. Okay to make that happen. So that's we need to just take, uh, you know, that, take that coffee off the, you know, that morning coffee off the menu. <laughs> need a lot more than one coffee, I think, if you're going to fund $577,000, yeah. but yeah. One a day, that's one a day, that's five in the bit. No, not quite. I don't think that's going to cut it, no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but anyway, so with some commitment around 10 year savings plans and those sorts of things, you wait to get that job done. Yeah. And that's not even withstanding the, the, the fact that what we're seeing is that Children staying at home longer, trying mm. to then save for that property today. They're going to buy in oh, around about what twenty forty, Helen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you look at again their deposit being around about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for a home that's on average six hundred thousand dollars. So you're talking about you know five hundred seventy-seven thousand for their education, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for a home deposit. If you're trying to help them with that. If they're going to tertiary education, it's another, say, $90,000. So mm. you start to look and understand what those facts are and put some parameters around it. Then you have to start thinking about whether it's affordable for you and it, or whether it's something that you want to really do. So, so you start to say children by choice, Helen. <laughs> no. I mean, but I've I, made my choices. <laughs> I think it's more about... There are certain decisions that you have to make, like I don't think we can have everything that opens and shuts oh, okay. for certain, you know, certainly there's some people who uh, in in the old days of Australia, sort of most people lived in here and there was a little bit of that and there was a little bit of that. And I think what we're seeing is more of that and more of that and this and those people who are in this middle bracket. Are oh, I thought you were just making a, a set of random hand gestures there, Helen. <laughs> 
the financial plan is hokey pokey. Um, but anyway, no, so you're saying there's a lot of people sort of trying to live beyond their the means or living a bit too decadently when probably they need to take a bit more of a conservative approach to life if they're planning to have children go through quality schooling. Yeah, and part of financial advice, I think, is about laying out, understanding what it is that the client's expectations are mm. and working out what is realistic and then coming backwards and going, okay, how, if you want to reach that, how do you do that and setting those motions in place early as opposed to people doing different things without understanding how this whole fits together for the short term, the medium and the long term. Mm. Yeah, that's those gestures again. <laughs> obviously touched a nerve there. I think that's normally what happens at the Central Business Show when they start gesturing. Um, now, anyway, no, that's really important. But look, important around this obviously is, uh, is talking to professional about financial planning. If you're right. going to plan children, plan their, their financial welfare, plan their education, financial planner. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, now, how do they get in contact with you, Helen? Be and just look us up on, on your own two feet.com.au and we'll help you from there. Okay. Is there any limit on the amount of gesturing they can do in your company? <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't help myself. Okay, Helen Baker, our fun-loving resident expert financial planner of the East Central Business Show. We'll talk to you next time. So just a general chat with Helen Baker, our resident expert financial planner of the East Central Business Show. Helen, now, uh, where's this passion come from about financial planning? We've just shot your first series. You've talked about you like it. Yeah. Where's that come from? I didn't know to start with. So my background was originally uh, more as a fixer. So I used to go into businesses and fix things and make things happen. So mm. I think the combination of the finance background, the project management, the fixer, and uh, dealing with people, one, two, three, and here I am. Okay, fabulous. Now we're gonna put a disclaimer up on, around us at the moment. So it's probably down here somewhere. -ish. But you know, it's really important that people understand that what have we do in these episodes is not specific advice, yeah? No, so specific advice must be tailored to their personal circumstances. Mm. So we'll just be talking generally mm. about bits and things and if that interests them and sparks them, they can seek specific advice from there. Okay, so now how do people get the Helen Baker though? So there's a book and there's a website to make contact, yeah? Yeah, so there's the website, there is the book that you can buy, I'm on LinkedIn, um, you find me wandering around Brisbane. Okay. <laughs> Leave me alone if I'm at the groceries, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, on your own two feet.com.au mm. is uh, the hub of where you'll find everything you need to know and really. It's a book title as well, isn't it? It is. What does that mean? It's all consistent. Okay, fabulous. All right, so that's a, a couple of great ways to get your Helen Baker, the resident expert financial planner on the East Central Business Show.